Hello and welcome. This is the first video from the Avastar 1.1 reference series. Today I will step through the creation of an Avastar character, a character which is fully based on the second life avatar. I will guide you through the creation of the initial avatar, and how you use the Avastar shape sliders to modify the character shape. Then we will export the character as a Kalata file, and finally import the character to Second Life. I assume you have already installed Blender 2.71 together with the Avastar 1.1 add-on for Blender. If you have not yet installed the Avastar add-on, then please do this now. Simply follow the installation guide and then get back here. I also recommend that you have at least basic knowledge about working with Blender itself. However I will try to keep the tutorial as simple as possible. So, let's begin. Creating a Novastar character is really easy. Ensure that you are in object mode. Then remove the default object. And navigate to, add, Novastar. And after a few seconds, your new Novastar is born at the current cursor location. This character is fully compatible to the Second Life avatar. It is made out of several parts. The head, with separate eyes and eyelashes. The upper body. And the lower body. The Avastar character even provides a hair template and a skirt template, but these parts are currently hidden. We will get back to them later. The meshes are rigged to an advanced Second Life compatible skeleton. But for now you only need to know, that the skeleton is currently shown as a set of circles which are placed around the Avastar shape. But don't worry, the skeleton is our secret star here, and thus we will put a lot of our time into this later. And I will explain to you all the details just in time when they are needed. It is also notable that this character is compatible with Second Life skin textures. Actually the Avastar character is an exact replica of the Second Life character in Blender. Hence you even can use the character to create your own unique skins. However, I will keep all of this for a later tutorial. Let's take only one step at a time, keep things easy for now, and turn back to the basic features. Okay. The Avastar character is always initially created with the default female avatar shape. But we can change this at any time. So, let's get hands on the shape sliders. The shape sliders are located in the armature's object properties. Please ensure that the armature is selected and appears in a bright orange color. Then look on the right side of the blender screen. There, you find the property editors. Look at the icon bar at the top of the window. The bar starts with a camera icon for the scene's render options. A bit further to the right you find a small cube icon, the symbol for the object properties editor. The shape sliders are located here. Scroll down the panel area until you find the avatar shape panel. Now I already told you that Avastar is fully compatible to the second life avatar. And this includes the avatar shape sliders, which you use for modifying your second life avatar shape. Well, the shape sliders here, do the same job in Blender. Okay, let's examine the sliders in more detail. First, we look at the section selector. The different sections specify slider groups which are dedicated to specific parts of the avatar. By default the body section is expanded but you can change this at any time. To the right of the section selector, we find a checkmark labeled with mail. So this is the gender selector, and if you enable this option, then the Avastar character instantly changes its shape to the second life default male character. You find the section specific shape sliders directly below the section selector. Here you have a few options. First you can slide the values with your mouse, by clicking the left mouse key. Then while holding the key down, 
you can drag the mouse sideways to change the slider value. As soon as you release the mouse, the new value is set. Note that now a new icon shows up on the right side. This icon indicates that the slider has been changed. When you click on this icon, then the slider is reset back to its second life default value. Some sliders also show a stickman icon on the left side. This icon indicates that the corresponding slider directly changes the skeleton, while all other sliders only modify the mesh, and keep the skeleton as it is. You also can reset the entire slider section at once. You do this by clicking on the reset icon in the top row of the slider section. Finally, if you want to reset the entire character to its default values, then we provide a global reset function in the shape functions section. Simply press on the button, reset to default shape. By the way, if you ever want to revert a change, then pressing Ctrl Z repeatedly, will step back in history. Now, let's use the shape sliders for creating a small troll or a dwarf, or whatever comes to your mind, just to see the shape sliders in action. Okay, that should be enough for the demonstration. So let's now take a more detailed look into the shape sliders section. Here we find two very special slider groups. The changed sliders, and the skeleton sliders. The first slider group is easy to understand. This group simply contains the set of changed sliders. The other group contains the set of sliders which directly modify the skeleton. This group becomes interesting when you are working on mesh attachments. Okay, so eventually our mesh character is defined. So, what next? Well, now it is time to export the character. And this is done with Avastar's Kalata Exporter. You find the Kalata Exporter in the tool shelf. So let's open the tool shelf now. From the vertical tab selector we choose, Avastar. And then we locate the Kalata panel. Right now we have only selected the armature. But the exporter needs to know exactly which meshes we want to export. So, let's select the head, the upper body, and the lower body of our character. Now you can proceed by setting some export options. But let's keep hands off from those settings for now. The default settings are already good for our purposes. Before we actually click on the export button, let me first guide you to another very powerful Avastar feature, that is, the Mesh Info Panel. You find this panel further down in the tool shelf. Here you get some important statistic information about your current object selection. The most important part is the mesh statistic. Avastar does some basic checks on your meshes, and whenever it thinks that something is not good, then it will display an appropriate warning here. Right now we see that three meshes will be exported. We also see two check marks near the triangle count and the material count. 
Further down we see that Avastar has identified 21 weight maps which will control the bone animations in Second Life. We will later see in detail what exactly weight maps are, and how they are created and modified. Please make use of this panel frequently. However I recommend you keep the panel closed, while you edit your objects, because the panel consumes a lot of computer power when it is open. But for now all looks well, so let's go ahead, move back to the Colada panel, and click on the Colada Export button. Now a file selection menu pops up. Select a convenient location for your export file. Right now all what Avastar will do is exporting a single file for you. However, later the tool might export many more files. So it may be wise to already get used to always export into a dedicated directory. So, let's create a new directory for this character, named my mesh. And finally specify the name of the exported file which I choose to be mymesh.dae in our case. So it is this file which we will later upload to Second Life. And here is one remark for the experts, Avastar always exports the skeleton data along with the meshes, and it finds out by itself which skeleton it should use. So you never need to select the armature for export. Finally let's also store the project into a Blender project file so that we can always get back here even after we restarted Blender. Navigate to File, Save As, and then proceed as before. Only this time we store to a Blend file instead of a Colada file. Now, finally, let's turn our attention to Second Life.